Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Berlakis presenting case 163 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the challenges of coronary angiography and percutaneous coronary intervention through a TAVR valve. The patient was a 78-year-old woman who presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction and heart failure. She had a previous stand in the LAD. She had previous TAVR with a core valve, chronic kidney disease, and she was found to have an ejection fraction of 31% with anterior hypokinesis. This is the coronary angiogram. There was significant difficulty with engaging the left main, and these were the images obtained based on which uh, a conservative approach was recommended. However, the quality of the images is uh, suboptimal. As we can see here on both uh, films, uh, there is poor filling of the coronary artery, poor visualization of the LAD especially. So essentially, these are non-diagnostic images. And as we'll see subsequently, there were potential issues that were missed uh, with this angiogram. The patient went on to have a PET CT and she was found to have uh, anterior ischemia. And then she was sent again for coronary angiography. We obtained femoral axis, and then um, we used uh, what's called the air mail technique. So we got the guide as close as we could, and then we advanced a guide wire into the coronary artery, the circumflex in this case, without having the guide selectively engaged. This is called the air mail technique. Of course, when we use an EBU or an XP guide, we have to be careful because if the guide uh, gets kinked and we try to bring it back, then there could be an entrapment of the guide catheter. So it is important to actually straighten the tip of the EBU or XB before trying to remove it from a core valve. So we got the wire into the circumflex and then we used a guide catheter extension that went into the left main. And now we do have a diagnostic and geography, and we can see that the ostium of the LAD has this very severe and heavily calcified lesion. So now this uh, provides a better explanation, both for the non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, but also explains the regional wall motion abnormality and the anterior wall ischemia. So we also have some distal left main disease. The circumflex appears to do well. And the previously placed stents into the LAD uh, seem to be patent without any significant restenosis. And this is another image. Once again, very high-grade lesion in the proximal LAD. The left main is diffusely diseased. Not much disease in the circumflex. This is actually a quadrification. We have the LAD, we have the circumflex, and I have two... Um, Ramus branches, essentially. So we wired uh, the LAD, the circumflex, and one uh, of the Ramus branches. And then uh, we performed intravascular ultrasound that did demonstrate calcification of the proximal LAD. Actually, it was not circumferential. It was about 180 degrees. We then predilated with an angioscalped, keeping the guide wire in place. Um, used a 3.5 millimeter NC balloon that seemed to expand well. There was actually some dissection of the proximal LAD. And then we proceeded with uh, provisional stenting. This is a 3.5 millimeter drag eluting stent, deployed all the way from the left main into the proximal LAD. But uh, the expansion was suboptimal. The minimum lumen area was 5.8 millimeter square in the proximal LAD. So we uh, went back and did intravascular lithotripsy. We didn't want, obviously, to do any uh, atherectomy since we have a fresh stent, so we did intravascular lithotripsy, which the patient tolerated pretty well, and then proximal optimization with a 4.0 millimeter balloon. And uh, the area improved. It's still not perfect, uh, but uh, it went from 5.8 to 6.8, still oval, we do have the calcification, but the area is uh, acceptable. And this is the final angiogram. We have a good flow into the LAD. We have also good flow in the circumflex, as well as the two ramus branches. Um, the left main is well expanded. 
So the key message, the key lesson from this case is the importance of doing a good coronary angiogram, which can often be quite challenging in patients who have a previous TAVR. It is important to get uh, into the proximity of the vessel and to fill the vessel well. And to do that, one can use femoral access. It's a little easier to engage with femoral access, especially in challenging cases like this. Using smaller guy catheters, actually JL4 or JL3, are preferred for this because they have a more favorable angulation coming from below, from the struts of the valve. We did use the air mail technique in which we advance a guide wire without being selectively engaged, and this guide wire helped deliver a guide extension and uh, visualize the LAD in the left main, which uh, provided the diagnostic quality images. And then finally, uh, good lesion preparation and using intravascular imaging are important when treating heavily calcified lesions. Here the calcium arc was 180 and the angiosculpt and non-compliant balloon seemed to expand well. But expansion was not perfect when we did uh, IVUS after deployment and we ended up using intravascular lithotripsy to completely expand the stand. Thank you.